Now something you will find that is really handy for beginning uh, builders is that Radiata Pine is actually quite soft to work with. So it, it doesn't take a, a very long time to sand. Um, you don't end up with a lot of nasty, nasty fibers uh, with it as well. So uh, although if I were working in an enclosed area, I would definitely have a mask on, but I'm actually completely open here. Uh, there's a lot of ventilation, it's a bit of a breeze, cross breeze coming through. So uh, that's just a little safety thing for you. Um, now I have put on a Maranti fretboard. Uh, what I'll find with Maranti is if you're here in Australia or New Zealand and you, uh, Maranti I believe is uh, an Indonesian, is an Indonesian timber I believe, I might be wrong so please don't, don't um, or correct me if I'm wrong please. Um, it's, it's a really lovely material to work with again. Um, try and get it the dark, the darker you get it, the better it is actually for fretboard material. You can get some which is really, really super blonde. I'd stay away from that because you can pretty much push your thumb in. And if it's fine for a fretless fingerboard because it burns really nicely as well if you're gonna burn it for markers. Um, but if you're putting frets in, the frets, will, they won't grab very well. You do need a, a harder timber for those frets tangs to actually grab onto. So that's it so far. I'll just give you a little look at what it looks like. Okay, now I will be putting in a guiding nut. So there will be a zero fret near the edge and then a guiding nut uh, just glued in here, it, which will be made out of timber and it will glide, guide the strings onto the fretboard. I like the look of those old 60s Japanese guitars. So I don't like having just a, a dead stop here on the fretboard. Um, it's not, I, I think it just finishes it off quite nicely. All right, we've got the holes cut there. Now we're going to put in, I'm gonna fit this into the neck. That's our next step. Once I've done that, then I'm going to fret the neck. Now, as opposed to some boxes where you uh, or guitars where you have the the neck coming out the back of the cigar box. This light, it's a good light, but it drives me nuts. Um, out the back of the cigar box, this particular one is going to be a stop tail. I'm really into stop tail guitars at the moment. I'm quite enjoying them. Um, so, which means I'm only going to have to do a cutout on this side. I like to have the box with the wording facing the right way around, I suppose from top to bottom. Sometimes some builders like to do it like that. So when you look down, the player can see the, the words. I prefer it like that myself. Um, okay, so next step is I'm going to cut out the placement for the neck. Now, one thing that I'll do is I'll find, I'll line up the ledge, this ledge here, that the lid will be sitting on. I line it up just here and I find how deep I'm going to go and I will put a mark down. There we go. Get my sharp pencil. I just put a line, just a little notch, if you will. Now I'm going to use my wooden ruler and the reason I'm using my wooden ruler is because I have changed the markings here. Now I have zero in the center and I go one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So the measurements go out that way. So it helps me find center. There we go. Now we're working in metric here guys. So just shy of seven and a half centimeters. So I'll find my center line. Now I know this timber is uh, tw uh, 42 millimeters across this way. So I'm going to go 21 millimeters this way and 21 millimeters that way. I don't use inches, guys. I'm not an imperial. 
Uh, I'm a rebel. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm gonna use one of these tricky little things. I like these plastic ones because, especially on a box like this, I don't want it to mark the, mark the timber, and I'm just gonna gently find a spot. Yeah, that was about it. I'll flip it over now. And I'm not overly worried. That's pretty good. I might just use my ruler. And, yeah. Two. Oh, that was good. Okay. So I had a good measurement there. I'm just eyeballing. It's not the box that's going to hold hold the timber it is actually going to be the timber insert that I've put in which will um, support it now I need a sharp knife and I'm going to take 45 minutes to locate my sharp knife no I won't so on my pedal bench somewhere under this disaster found it here's a, a good solid one now I'm pre-scoring. One, two, three, four, five. Just being careful not to overcut too much. All right, I am actually going to put in a block. Uh, here. Just gonna use a sanding block. Got Make a mark. Now I'm thinking what I might do is I'm going to put some tape down because it's a dark box. Oh, what I did was then was I dirtied the tape. All right, this tape is fairly strong, so I just put, stuck the tape on my workbench, lifted it back up. There's a whole heap of gunk on the tape now, so it's it's not as sticky as it would have been. Um, which potentially could have meant that it might have ripped up some of the timber. I've got my pull saw here. I'm just gonna use a simple pull saw. And I'm gonna hold the box. Uh, I was thinking about holding the box. I think what I'll do is I will clamp it. Get Jed onto the case, Jed clamp it. Beverly Hills Village, hillbilly joke for you. Now I always err on the side of making the hole too small than too big. Right, so what I will do, just gently take that tape off. I'll flip it over to the other side. I'm definitely gonna need to file it a little bit. And that just gives me that line, okay. And I don't want to cut on the inside of that line. So I'll move this over to this side. Princey! That's Prince upstairs saying I want to go back in. He was meant to hang out with me. All right. Now, this is a pull saw. So it cuts when you're pulling the saw backwards, not forward. Let's get the gunk out of there. Cool. All right. So now, as you saw before, I was pre-cutting. There you go. So the tape is actually quite dirty. I'll save that for another time. So it started to move. And I can actually get this knife in just a little bit. There we go. Starting to go. Just there. The cardboard's giving. And just keep my hand out of the way. Fingers. Back this way. Just 
looking at how. I think just pull it. Yep, that's it. Put the blade back in. Put that back. I'm just going to use a fine file. Now, something I do with the file is I kind of just here. It can be a little bit ragtag where you've used a saw. I tend to. I'll just file in, put a little bevel on it. Now this is cardboard, so it's going to want to um, fray a bit. And I believe sitting. Oh, not bad. It's a bit of an angle I can see because I want to take out a little bit more on this side because the neck's got a little twist in it like that now. So let's take that out. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be very gentle with this. I'm using a Shinto, a Shinto file. I'm going to use the fine side. Just some down there, and I'm going to take a little off the top edge. Back up. See how we go. I think we might be okay. Oh, I can feel that sitting in really quite nicely now. I believe it's going to fit really well. Okay. Now again, I'm eyeballing the neck just to get some balance. Measure it from here. We've got five and a half centimeters. Okay, five and a half centimeters there. Five and a half, oh, 5.6. Five point six. Looking at that, how does that look? That looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna put a little line there. One line there. I put one line there. Now, this is higher than this, so I can't cut a block for that end and put it up the back end, all right, because I've taken less out of this section and more out of this section, and the reason is I want a back, back angle. You might be able to see that there. There we go, all right. All right, so that's that. I've got that really quite nicely set. So first things first, I'm gonna put a block down the bottom, so bear with me. I'm gonna go and find some bits of bits of timber, some offcuts, and I'm going to set that up. Right on. Here we go. All right, that's the box. So I've got one piece here under the notch, and the other piece in the back set up. So it's going to bring the back of the the heel and the bridge right up. Once that piezo's in, it'll be clamped shut beautifully against the top of that box. And this is what the guitar's gonna look like so far. Close that up. And that's without all the extra accoutrement. It's a nice size neck. I've gone for a 24, 24 inch scale length on this one. So not too, not too long feeling that I do want to give it another sand and I'm probably going to use a shellac on this one actually I might use a nice dark amber shellac on the neck um, once I've done the frets and this is going to have a real look at that little that break angle there it's going to be so nice just tilt back cool 
it's not heavy it's not really really substantial but it's it's enough to create a little just a little wiggle room up here for your fingers woodly, woodly, woodly. all right i'm gonna take this out just let those blocks dry a bit. And then let's do let's do these frets 